In this video, we're going to take a look at how to create some simple geometry and change some of their attributes. So first of all, what type of geometry can we make? Well, there's three types. There's wireframe. So those are points, lines, arcs, curves, letters, anything like that. Then you have surfaces. So those are three dimensional or 2D, but they have no volume. And then you have solids, which are three dimensional shapes with volume. So this video is only gonna focus on the wireframe type. So let's stay in that tab for now. If you don't have a grid showing like I do here, go to view and then we can go over here to grid and you can hit show grid. And if you hit here, you can alter the grid settings. So let's go to the wireframe tab. First thing we wanna do is draw a line. So right here, we have our lines area, and we're just going to do a line in points. And what I want you to do is hover over the center, which is your origin, and you see that little thing show up there. That little icon tells you that you're snapped to the origin. So if I click and I draw a line out, just arbitrary any direction, it is now a blue line. That line is blue because I can still edit it. So if I go over here to my options for the line, I have a lot of things I can do. I can change where the endpoints are. I can change the length or the angle. You can make it horizontal or vertical. And pretty much every command in Mastercam has a lot of options over here. So let's say I want to make this line three inches and I want the angle to be zero degrees. So now I have a horizontal line that's three inches long. Now I'm done creating this line. So if I am done with lines, I can just hit the check. That's okay. If I want to make more lines, I want to hit okay and create new operation. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm still in the line function here and I'm going to click again, same spot. And now you see another little icon show up. That's telling me that I'm on an endpoint. So I'm going to click, draw it anywhere arbitrary. And let's make this line also three inches at an angle of 90 degrees. So it's still blue, so I can edit it. So if maybe I was wrong, I want to change the angle 100. You can still do that. Let's go back to 90. So I'm done creating lines. Let's hit the check. So now let's say we want to make a circle. Let's go up here to arcs and click. This is going to create a circle center point. We can change the radius or the diameter. Let's go ahead and put a radius of one inch. And now you see I have a circle attached to my cursor. I can place it anywhere. And if I hover over an endpoint, I get the snap. If I hover over an endpoint, snap, or to the origin. Let's go ahead and place it at the origin. So there we go. Now let's say I actually wanted the diameter to be five inches. I can still change that. Now you can only do that one time. So if I create a piece of geometry, I have unlimited options to change it until I hit the check or the blue check. So I'm done with circles. I'm going to hit the green check and my options box goes away. So what are these little snaps that I keep seeing? Well, this bar up here has your auto cursor. So if I click on auto cursor configuration, here's all my settings. So these are the things that I can snap to. You can enable all or disable all. I'm gonna go ahead and enable everything except for Angular. All right, hit check. Also in this bar, you have selection settings. So if you need to select certain things. Now that we have some geometry drawn, what did we actually just draw on? Well, if you go down here in the bottom left-hand corner, you can see that we drew on the top XY plane. If we want to make sure of that, we can go over here to the planes manager, which is this tab down here. And we can see that we're on the top with our G, which is graphics, our world coordinate system, our C, which is the construction plane. That's what you draw on. And then you have the T, which is your tool plane. So we want all of these to be locked to the top. And a cool thing about Mastercam 2017 is 
you can have these follow each other. So if you go up here to this button right here, it says follow rules. If you drop this down, you can see that you can make this follow rules. So if I change my graphics plane, for example, it'll follow. So for front, if I double click here, you can see now my construction and my tool plane followed my graphics. And if I want to go back to top, I just double click again, and there we go. So we want to stay on the top plane for now, but just know that your planes manager is over here, and you always want to make sure that you're drawing on the correct plane. Now that we know about the auto cursor and the planes, let's take a look at some more geometry. So if we go up here to our wireframe tab, let's go to point. And you got a few points to choose from, but let's just do a regular point. And I'm going to show you a new command called fast point. And this can be used with pretty much any command, lines, arcs, and it's pretty useful. So go ahead and hit the space bar on your keyboard, and you'll see this little white box pops up. So what this white box is, it's basically an MDI mode. If I want to just put a point in at a specific location, I can do that. So maybe I want it at x2, y2. I can go ahead and just type that in, 2, point, comma, 2, point, and if I hit enter, there's my point. And if I go to my digital readout here at the bottom, take a look here, when I hover my cursor over, it's showing at 2, 2. So that's how that fast point command works. Let's try it again. If I hit the space bar, white box pops up. Let's do this one at negative 3.0 comma negative 1 point enter and there it is and again checking the digital readout I'm at negative 3 negative 1 so that's a pretty useful feature you'll use it for things like holes or positioning lines and arcs okay we are done creating points so let's hit the X for cancel and let's move on to some other shapes now whenever you see a drop down arrow, that means you can drop that down and you have more options. But let's just stick with the rectangle. So go ahead and click on the rectangle, brings up a new options box. We want the rectangle to anchor to the center and we want the dimensions to be 5, tab, 4, enter. And now I have this rectangle that's floating around, I can place it wherever I like. So I'm going to place this at the origin right there and you can see it's snapping to the center of the circle and there we go now we're done with rectangles so let's hit the X and take a look at some entity attributes so what is an entity attribute well basically it's anything that differentiates one entity from the next so that could be type of entity or it could be a color or even the level that it's on so let's take a look at some of that First, let's start off by changing the color of something. So in previous versions of Mastercam, that used to all be done here at the bottom bar. Now if you right click, all of that information is right here. If you prefer it in the old version, you can click right here, it turns on your attributes panel. If you click this, it'll take it back to your right click menu. I personally really like it in the right click menu. It's always at my fingertips, ready to go. First thing we'll talk about is colors. My default geometry color is green. Yours may be a different color, but we can change that as we go and we can create entities in different colors or change them later. All of our entities are in green, so let's just split them up and make them different colors. To do that, right click, click on wireframe color, and we can choose a new color. So how about red? Now if I click something here, how about the circle? Right click, I can hit red and now it's red. Pretty easy to do. Now how about the rectangle? If I just click one of these lines, only one of them becomes selected. You can see that yellow dotted means it's selected. If I want to select an entire rectangle at one time, or any series of lines, arcs, curves that are connected end to end, I can hold down shift and grab everything at one time. So let me hit escape. Nothing selected. I'm going to hold down shift and click. Everything becomes selected. I can do that as well with these two lines because they are connected end to end so I can hold down shift and grab both of the lines at the same time. So let's try it in the rectangle, hold down shift, click or right click, choose a wireframe color, how about 
bright blue. Now it's bright blue. Can't help with these lines. Let's make these separate colors. So I'm gonna click, right click, wireframe color. How about gold? And this one, click, right click, wireframe color. How about purple? So now we got some different colored entities. I've got two green points, I've got a rectangle, I've got an arc. Now let's take a look at levels. So if you've ever used AutoCAD or any other drafting software, you might be familiar with layers. And a layer is basically you're drawing in the same workspace, but you can turn the layers on and off so it makes it easier to work. Mastercam, they're called levels. If you go over here to your managers, you can go to your level manager, and we can see that we only have one level right now. It is visible. It has nine entities and no name. Now they've updated the level manager quite a bit for Mastercam 2017, and the right-click menu is way nicer than it used to be. So let's take a look at how to change levels. Now again, previously this was done down here. It is now done in the right-click menu. So I'm going to go ahead and right-click. And if we hover over this right here, it says change level. And here's the level we're currently on. If I click the change level button, it's going to ask me select the entities change level of. So how about the rectangle? Hold down shift, click, the rectangle is grabbed. I can hit enter or I can hit this checkbox. So now it's asking me, do I want to move it or copy it? So I actually want to move it to a new level. And this little checkbox here is saying, do I want to use the level I'm drawing on? So I'm going to say no. And you can select a level or you can just type in a new one. So maybe level two. I can hit enter. And now you can see I have level one with five entities and I have level two with the four entities. And those are these individual lines that you can see. Now let's try that with the lines. So you can do this in any order. I can shift click have it selected, right click, and change the level that way. So let's put this in level three. Or I'll do it with the arc. You can right click, click change level, choose what you want to do, hit enter, and make a new level that way. It's a little quicker if you select entity first. So now we have all of our entities on separate levels. How does this help us? Well, if we have a really complicated drawing, we can turn things on and off. So for example, if I want to turn the arc on and off, I can go ahead and do that. If I want to turn the rectangle on and off, I can do that. Now right now, I'm just kind of guessing where they're at, so I can actually put a name in here. And to do that, you need to select the level. So that little checkbox tells you which one's selected. Right now, level one is the current selected level. All I have to do is go down here to name, and I can type in points. Next one, level two, that's the rectangle. So I'm gonna type in rectangle. Next one down, three, that's the lines. So I'm gonna type in lines. And four, that's the arc. Now this is a really good idea to do when you have a drawing with a lot of layers that are complicated, always label them all, makes everything really easy in the future. And if you wanna make a new level while you're in here, you can just type in a number. So I could type in 100 and you can call that whatever you want. Now, if you want to draw on this level or any other level for that matter, all you need to do is select it. So right now level 100 is selected. So if I were to draw a line and hit the check, you can see that I have one entity now on this new level that I created. Now you notice my line I just drew is in red. So that's because if I right click, this is now set to red. So that's my current drawing color. If I want to stay in green, I just go back to green. And the next line I draw is also in green. Hit the check. So it's a good time to point out that colors and levels are independent of each other. This is unlike other CAD software. And this gives you another option to organize what you're looking at on the screen. So let's say you have a really complicated part or drawing and it's really hard to select what you want. Well, if you have things split up on different levels, entities, or colors, you can use these functions over here. Now this toolbar on the right hand side is called your quick mask toolbar and it's really, really handy. So let's say I wanted to just grab the arc. 
Well, I can go over here to Quick Mask. I can do Select All Arc Entities, and it automatically selects it. I'll hit Escape. Or if I want to do all the lines, I can do Select All Line Entities, and now all of the lines are selected. Or All Points. Now the points are selected. You can also do this with color. So if you go down here to the bottom, select all entities by color, a box pops up and I can choose from any color that I currently have drawn. So how about the green? If I hit the check, you can see the green entities are now selected. There are many other useful quick mask commands that will be used in future videos. For now, we're just gonna leave it at that. In the next video, we're going to take a look at taking an actual part, drawing it in 2D space, and putting some toolpaths on it. See you then.